Let's analyze the top five banano captains. In some social club, Frank Fireman Porco was sitting among his fellow wise guys. With a nickname earned from his fiery temper and reputation for getting things done, Frank was a soldier in the banano crime family, hailing from the Messino Rusty faction. Frank was a man of many hats in the mob world. As an earner, he ran several lucrative rackets, including gambling and loan sharking operations that lined the pockets of the family. But Frank wasn't just a businessman, he was also a knockaround guy, known for handling the family's dirty work with ruthless efficiency. In 2002, Frank's world was turned upside down when he was indicted alongside former acting boss Vinny TV Battalamenti. Even with legal troubles, Frank remained resilient, facing the charges with the same steely resolve that had earned him his reputation in the streets. John Anthony Big John Contello was born into a world where loyalty, respect, and fear dictated power, growing up in Brooklyn's mafia-heavy Gravesend neighborhood. His early life revolved around the local characters, particularly the Chili Brothers, who ran their neighborhood with an iron fist and smooth operations. As a young man in the 1970s, Contello was drawn to their way of life, seeing in it a path to wealth, power, and the respect he craved. He began his mob career working as a bookmaker and debt collector under the tutelage of Bonanno family capo Joseph Chili. Through his loyalty and ability to get things done, Big John quickly proved himself valuable. By 1999, under the leadership of Bonanno boss Joseph Messino, Contello became a made man, a coveted induction into the ranks of the family. As his mentor Joseph Chili aged and his health deteriorated, Contello's influence grew. By 2004, Contello was named acting capo for Jerry Chili, one of the Chili brothers. From this new position, he ran gambling and extortion rackets in Brooklyn and South Florida. Two establishments became central to his operations, Belfiore Meats and Nassau Bar, which were fronts for their criminal enterprise. Business was booming, but the authorities were watching closely. A joint task force launched an eight-year-long investigation that would ultimately bring down their crew. In August 2008, Contello, along with Jerry Chili and others, was indicted on racketeering charges, and a long trial ensued. Knowing that fighting the case would result in a longer sentence, in May 2009, Contello pled guilty to extortion. He was sentenced to three years in prison, a relatively short term considering the severity of the charges. Released in March 2012, Contello came out to a changed landscape. His old mentor, Jerry Chili, was weakened by illness. The Bonanno family, however, recognized Big John's value and made him an official captain shortly after his release. He took over Chili's remaining operations running his crew with the same discipline and ruthlessness he had learned from his mentors. In 2015, Contello was seen at various Bonanno family meetings and even attended their Christmas party in Staten Island. By this time, he was in full control of the remnants of the Chile regime, particularly after Jerry Chile passed away in 2016. Contello, now in his 60s, was still going strong, running his crew's operations with the same vigor as when he was a younger man. Fear and respected, Contello has a Bonanno dark side. An avid fisherman, he often spent weekends on the water with his son, John Jr. It was one of the few peaceful activities he could indulge in, far removed from the stress and violence of his everyday life. For Contello, fishing was a way to bond with his son and to briefly escape the constant pressure of running a mafia crew. Today, Big John Contello remains a respected figure in the Bonanno crime family, quietly managing his operations and enjoying the simple pleasures of life with his family. In 1940, Anthony Graziano was born on Staten Island, New York. With the Bonanno crime family, he rose to prominence as a gangster and finally held the title of consigliere. Graziano was given a $250,000 punishment and five years in prison after entering a guilty plea to federal tax evasion in 1990. In 2002, he faced serious legal troubles when he was indicted on two counts of murder conspiracy. These charges stemmed from his failed attempts to have Colombo crime family members John Papa and Calvin Hennigar killed. That same year, in March, Graziano was also indicted on separate racketeering charges. As a result, in 2003, he was sentenced to 11 years in prison. He served his time and was released in 2011. Graziano's life came to an end in 2019, when he died of cancer at the age of 78. Louis Haha Adanasio Jr. is a powerful captain in the Bonanno crime family, known for his ruthless reputation. Atanasio acquired the nickname Haha due to his disturbing habit of laughing when carrying out acts of violence, particularly murders. In April 1984, Haha stepped up to the plate and allegedly whacked Bonanno soldier Cesare Bonventre. The hit was orchestrated by Bonanno leaders Philip Rastelli and Joseph Massino, who perceived Bonventre as a threat to the administration. On the fateful day of the murder, Atanasio and fellow mobster Salvatore Vitale lured Bonventre into a trap under the pretense of a meeting with Rastelli. 
Upon entering a garage, Atanasio fatally shot Bonventre twice in the head. Despite sustaining grievous injuries, Bonventre continued to resist, compelling Atanasio to deliver two more fatal shots. The body was subsequently dismembered and disposed of in three large glue drums in a warehouse in Garfield, New Jersey. A macabre act intended to conceal the crime. The identification of Bonventre's remains proved to be a challenging task for forensic experts, taking three months to complete. This gruesome episode serves as a testament to the brutality and ruthlessness associated with organized crime, particularly within the Bonanno family, where individuals like Atanasio operated with impunity. During the 1980s, Louis Louis Haha Atanasio Jr. faced legal troubles, including convictions for tax evasion and attempting to bribe a state trooper, resulting in a five-year prison sentence. Despite his incarceration, he reportedly continued to run a loan sharking operation. In June 1996, Atanasio was indicted again, this time for racketeering and loan sharking charges. He allegedly operated his loan sharking business from federal prison during his previous sentence. During this period, he married his second wife, Erica, in a prison wedding ceremony. In January 2004, facing new charges including murder and conspiracy, Atanasio fled with Erica to St. Martin to evade prosecution. However, he was apprehended by local authorities in December 2004, following a tip-off. Extradited to the United States, he was charged for various crimes, including the 1984 murder of Cesare Bonventre. In September 2006, Atanasio struck a plea deal and was sentenced to 15 years in prison for Bonventre's murder. He served his sentence at the Federal Correctional Institution Elkton in Ohio, with a projected release date of January 23, 2018. However, he was released earlier, on May 2, 2017. Jerome Jerry Asaro, an alleged captain in the Bonanno crime family's notorious Howard Beach Asaro crew, was born into a legacy of organized crime. His father, Vincent Asaro, had long been a significant figure in the New York Mafia. Jerome grew up steeped in the culture of secrecy, loyalty, and violence that surrounded the mob. By the time he came of age, he was already deeply involved in the family business, running operations, and carrying out the dirty work of the Bonanno crime family. One of the darkest chapters of Asaro's criminal career centered around Paul Katz, a low-level mob associate who had unwittingly crossed paths with the wrong people. In the early 1960s, Katz mysteriously disappeared after being suspected of being an informant. The truth, however, was buried, literally. His body was hidden beneath the basement of a home owned by notorious gangster James Burke. Burke, a close associate of the Bonanno family, had been immortalized in mafia lore as a mastermind of the infamous Lufthansa heist. For years, Katz's body remained entombed beneath the concrete floor, slowly decaying in the silence of Burke's basement. Then, in the 1980s, when the heat of law enforcement started closing in, Jerome Asaro was called in for a gruesome task, the exhumation of Katz's remains. It was a grisly reminder of the lengths the Mafia would go to protect its own. The body was dug up, decomposed and forgotten, and moved to an unknown location, erasing nearly all traces of Katz's murder. The case would remain dormant for decades, but in October of 2014, the past finally caught up with Jerome. Federal agents had been relentlessly investigating old Mafia cases, and Jerome Asaro's name surfaced once again. On October 10, 2014, Asaro pleaded guilty in a Brooklyn federal court to his role in digging up Katz's body and the arson, racketeering, and mob-related activities that had plagued his criminal career. The charges were staggering, and though many details were decades old, they painted a chilling picture of Jerome's life in organized crime. On March 26, 2015, Jerome Asaro was sentenced to seven and a half years in prison for racketeering, which included his role as an accessory to murder in Katz's death. The court recounted how Katz's corpse had been left to rot for years before being disturbed by Jerome in a grim act of loyalty to the family. While the exact location of Katz's final resting place remained unknown, the act of moving the body became a crucial piece of evidence that led to Asaro's conviction. Asaro was sent to FCI Squealkill, a medium security federal prison in Pennsylvania. There, he served his time quietly, a shadow of the man who had once walked in the deadly world of the New York Mafia. He was released on August 6, 2020. As of 2024, Jerry is still considered an alleged captain in the Bonanno family.